Hello, this is Nitin Dahad with EE Times. I'm talking to Samir Wasson, uh, CEO of MIPS, and we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the, the big news that they've had uh, today, and um, uh, we're going to talk about uh, what it means. So, um, Samir, hello. Hello, Nitin. How are thank you? you for having me. Uh, thank you. Um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a big day. Um, yeah, I mean, MIPS has got a long history, but this is probably a different era in time. And uh, tell us a, a little bit about uh, the transaction. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so first of all, um, appreciate you, you you taking the time to talk to me. But uh, yeah, it's actually a very very exciting day for us today, right? Um, MIPS is MIPS is not a new company. It's a it's a it's a very very strong legacy of CPUs and um, and products which have been successful. Today marks a very key milestone in our journey and uh, I feel we're just getting started, but marks a very key milestone in our journey where um, Global Foundries has, um, has signed a definitive agreement with us to acquire MIPS. Mm. And I think this, um, this, this forms a very strong union um, and I'm super excited about what we together will be able to do for our joint customers moving forward. Okay, um, now some, some details, so I think uh you, you will still be operating at, as an entity within MIPS as a brand, so that's not going to change. Uh, what will change? Yeah, so look, um, uh, global... And obviously, I, yeah, it depends so, on final closing and everything. Yeah, absolutely, right, yeah. But, but assuming everything goes to, goes to plan, uh, MIPS will operate as a standalone entity. Uh, it'll be a subsidiary under GF. And um, the key thing here is, um, what the biggest change our customers should see is an acceleration of what MIPS was already doing. See, MIPS has been focusing on building real-time compute um, and application processors in the, in the physical AI space. We announced our Atlas portfolio uh, not, not too long far back, uh, earlier in the year. Yes, we covered it and as well. Yeah. Exactly, right? Yeah. And uh, we've have, we have since then um, come out with more features on the Atlas Explorer tool as well, which, which, which allows customers to bring their software workloads and then choose what CPU works best for them. Um, and uh, now with, with, with MIPS becoming part of GF, uh, we see a, a unique possibility here to bring all of that work, combine that with Global Foundries' um, existing strong um, uh, manufacturing footprint around the world, combined with their channel, uh, where we can now start accelerating both uh, customer engagements, but also overall with the added investment uh, accelerate the rate at which we will develop these products. I mean, that's really nice. Uh, and uh, one of the questions uh, I would have would have come to my mind is, why not then just be an investor rather than acquire you? Uh, I mean, what does it do for you? Why, why did you make that decision as a CEO? Yeah, what it does for us, right? So that's a great question. Look, um, uh, uh, we are in a market where customers are going to be writing software on our products. Hmm. And these tend to be very long-term engagements. And us becoming part of a global brand like Global Foundries, an established semiconductor player, gives our customers a lot of confidence in being able to engage with us uh, without having to worry about them engaging with a private entity. Um, so I think that is definitely very attractive. Secondly, an investment is not similar, is not same as being part of a company. Okay. I'm looking forward to the MIPS, for the MIPS family to be part of the Global Foundry family because I think we complement each other very well. Mm -hmm. There are skill sets which MIPS brings to Global Foundries, and there are absolutely skill sets and assets which Global Foundries can help MIPS in a, in a very fundamental way to accelerate and become a mainstream supplier uh, for, for physical AI, IP, and solutions. Does that also give um, a little bit of an advantage for some of your customers uh, in terms of foundry access and things like that? Yeah, I mean, end of the day, if, if you think about it, right, um, Global Foundries is engaging with some of the similar customers we are engaging with yeah. because they're selling wafers to them, we're selling IP. So now we can go and bring more value to those customers. Um, absolutely, customers will see this as a, a, a much more end-to-end -end integrated approach in which they, they, they have one entity to go to and get what they're looking for. But moreover, it also expands our customer reach. There are customers we're engaging with today um, on the system side where Global Foundries may not have a footprint. Mm. And there may be customers where Global Foundries is engaging where we have not been able to scale so far. Yeah. So I think it's an acceleration for both companies, uh, MIPS uh, largely, but it is also a definite ad, uh, added value for our joint customers mm. because I think they get a much more holistic supplier, uh, which is what they're looking for. So 
That's all very well. Uh, now tell me, how, has that changed the, the way you're thinking in terms of MIPS roadmap and uh, or how, what does that do for you in terms of uh, your, your roadmap timelines? Yeah, so the core mission for MIPS has been um, how do we reduce the barrier of adoption for our customers on our technology? Mm. And we've been investing, if you think about the Atlas Explorer and the Atlas portfolio we've announced. We've announced a slew of real-time cores and application cores and AI-capable cores. We've also invested heavily in getting Atlas Explorer off the ground where you can do actual software, software and hardware core design um, and manage your software lifecycle through that as well. Hmm. So though both these aspects merge very well with what Global brings in, which is a very, very well-tested, rounded up uh, manufacturing footprint uh, and back-end capabilities. Okay. So what I see is our customers seeing an acceleration in uh, their acceptance of the technology into their roadmaps um, and then ramp to, ramp to production. Uh, production. Um, so what changes for MIPS is nothing fundamentally changes in our direction, in our strategy. The customers who we've been engaging with are only going to see an acceleration, like I said. And I think that is probably the most exciting part for us. I mean, your roadmap, because I, I, I think uh, just while I have you, uh, is, is focused on you know, that, so that pro, uh, real time uh, processors and, and applications. Is that right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, and Edge AI. Yeah, so, so most of what we do is very focused on Edge AI. Now, our IP does scale to hyperscalers as well, and we have some, some very large customer engagements ongoing in production in that already. Mm. But a lot of our R&D is focused on how do we bring AI capability out to the edge. Mm. And that is not going to be done with just standard cores which just get used across a variety of applications. Yeah. This has to be very application specific. So our core DNA is still going to be very application specific cores which work very well in real time problems. And we've taken motor control as an example. Most of our initial product focuses around motor control and how do we bring uh, robotics into that, uh, apply it to robotics, apply it to automotive. That's been where, where a lot of our energy has gone. So I think that stays, that mm -hmm. scales up nicely. That goes very well with, with Global Foundry's manufacturing footprint on both the mature nodes at 40 nanometer, but also 22 nanometer and then eventually at 12 nanometer as well. So there's a very heavy synergy in what GF assets are and how we can overlay that um, uh, with what we've been working on in the markets. Now, um I think this probably ties into a little bit of the, the general sort of market environment and trends, but uh, the question, if we don't take it the wrong way, is 40-year uh, history, you've been through various owners, what's different now? Yeah, I, I don't, it's, a, it's a question I expect, right? Mm. Um, it, a company with a 40-year 40 40 year old history like MIPS, that question is warranted, so no, I'm not taking it the wrong way. Look, um, MIPS has been acquired in the past, yeah. right? And um, when I look at the history, what I see has happened is MIPS has been acquired when unique technologies have, have been interesting or unique markets have been interesting. Um, graphics uh, early, early on, then smartphones after that. What I see now is, is some similarity, but a lot of new things as well. Mm. If you look at the edge AI opportunity, that is broader, both in terms of impact and in terms of potential customer base, than anything MIPS has ever seen in the past. Because everything we see around us is going to get more intelligent with time. Yep. And I think that lies, there lies in our biggest opportunity in edge AI. So where GF and, 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 and MIPS can work together is to go attack that opportunity because our technologies are suited for that. So that's one. The other thing I see is semiconductors is also broadening in terms of um, where in the globe is the interest. Yeah. Historically, it's been um, North America, Japan, China, Europe. But now we're seeing more centers of excellence and centers of R&D development and product development coming out, which are going to be broader. Yeah. And global, the very name is global, I think that helps. Yeah. I think that allows us to reach those customers. And if we can continue working to reduce the barrier of adoption, I think you will see customers emerge in regions which don't exist today. And I think those two regions where you have a large TAM, um, a broader TAM, not only in, 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 in volume, but also in breadth, and you have more regions, um, for MIPS, this is, this is a great thing because now we can start leveraging GF scale 
to start attacking those two opportunities. You know, it's interesting because I mean, I think in that, I think the si simplifying it, non-semiconductor clients are looking at how to build their own chips. Yeah, I mean, I whether they're looking to build their own chips or at least access to it, uh, at least access to it, right? Yeah. And 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 they're like, okay, how do I make sure that it is such a fundamental portion of their business yeah. that they can't afford to ignore it anymore? And then the second aspect is, you know, like as you talked about uh, uh, with the the Middle East investors. That's a big sort of growth area. Okay, we've had announcements in the large data centers, but I think that'll spread to a lot more. Yeah, I mean, we've seen so much activity uh, coming out of uh, out of Humane and Qualcomm in, in, in recent, recently in the Middle East. I think that's an area, I think North Africa is going to be interesting, Southeast Asia is going to be interesting, yeah. Eastern Europe is going to be interesting. Um, I don't think so anyone can predict who's going to do all the things. What we can do is things which we control, which is, Let's build technology which is applicable for a certain area and make sure that we are solving the problem application specific. And then combine that with global's reach, uh, try and get to as many customers and meet them where they are. Okay. There will be customers who want IP, there will be customers who want solutions, meet them where they are and, and move forward. So, f final question, yeah, what, ex what's, what excites you about this? What excites me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> long list. Yeah. Um, no, I think fundamentally just what we can do to the cust for the customers. Mm -hmm. um, um, I feel like there is, that we have answered some, some very fundamental questions in large customers' minds about uh, MIPS with our history and, and we've given them confidence that we are not only here to stay, we are here to go grow, thrive, serve them for many, many years to come. And I think that is by far the most exciting part. Um, becoming part of, a, of, of Global is very exciting for me and for the team uh, because I think we're going into a very capable team. We're going into an entity which executes well. So I think, I think that, that will be cross-pollination all around. So I excite, I'm excited both by, the, by what we can do for the customers, but also I think we are, we are becoming part of a stronger team and we can build a stronger Global Foundries. Well, Samir, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan.